everyone. Uh, this is a little different. Um, I won't be uh, looking at uh, comments from the discussion board. And I'll tell you why. This is a difficult text. Um, I mean, it's readable and it's understandable. Uh, but it's a difficult text. And when we approach difficult text, sometimes there's steps towards understanding it. Uh, you have to think about it. Yeah, and the, so you have to have time to think about it. Maybe a first reading is just that. It's a first reading. Uh, so... To be frank, there are some remarks on the discussion board, which I think are intelligent remarks, but are misinterpretations of the text. And, and, and I think that we have to clear some things up to move ahead with Plato. And especially looking forward to thinking about how Plato relates to Landsberg. And, and, and what I have in mind is the issue of religion and uh, specifically belief in God. And that is such a... In, in, in many people's minds, the idea of the immortality of the soul and the existence of God are so tightly connected that it is almost impossible to separate them, even in a text like this, in which God has no place whatsoever. I think that's the first thing I want to say, is that this, this text has nothing to do with God. It doesn't mean that Plato didn't believe in some sort of God or that Socrates did. They, they, they did. Um, but Socrates believed in the gods, the gods of the Greek religion, and um, it was not a monotheistic religion. It was not the kind of religion that had this uh, very tight connection between the existence of a god and the idea of an afterlife, of the immortality of the soul. Um, it's, it, it's a red herring. It's not going to help. It's natural. Believe me, I'm not I'm not criticizing the associations that people have made, but they're not going to help you understand this text. Because this text is not a religious text. It is not an argument for the uh, immortality of the soul by way of religion or by way of um, its association with the belief in, in God. It's not. It is a, a series of arguments from Socrates that are... Um, meant to establish something like the immortality of the soul in a purely rational way that is not associated with any kind of faith, but also not associated with any kind of rational understanding of God. Um, Socrates' ways of trying to prove or establish or at least make credible uh, the, the idea that the soul does not die at death, that it continues to have some sort of existence, are based on entirely other considerations. Uh, the logical consideration, let's say, of the argument from opposites, that uh, essentially that um, death comes from life and life comes from death, and that you know that, that things 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 emerge from their opposites. Uh, it may not. It, it's a interesting. I hope I said something in the videos about it. it's an interesting argument. I don't know how convincing it is, but it's, a, it's an example of a sort of way that he's going about trying to establish that the soul is not the kind of thing that can die. That it, it must persist after its separation from the body. Probably the strongest argument is his general argument that uh, having to do with the forms, um, the, the ideas, the, which he considers to be eternal. And, um, <clears throat> the argument that uh, if it's the soul or mind that can grasp these ideas, then they must have an affinity. They must be like each other. So if the ideas or forms are eternal, then the soul must be eternal as well. Maybe oftentimes we'll substitute the word mind. That, that's maybe his strongest argument. But another example that he's not approaching this by way of religion. Uh, he's not approaching this by association with belief in some sort of God. He's approaching it in an entirely different way. And it's important to see that, uh, that this is an argument for the immortality of the soul, which is, I would say, entirely divorced from religion. And it's important to see it for us because the next reading we do, Paul Landsberg, The Experience of Death, is not entirely divorced from religion and is not uh, entirely divorced from the belief in God. Uh, it is intimately attached to it. And so one of the ways in which 
we begin to contrast Plato's approach with Landsberg's approach is by seeing that the one has a religious foundation and the other does not. And Plato does not. I mean, it would take quite a sophisticated argument to, to establish that, it, that Plato does have a religious approach. I don't think in any kind of obvious way on the face of it that he, that he does. Um, the whole uh, second point, perhaps, that the whole idea of the harmony is a argument that does not come from Socrates. It comes from uh, Simeus uh, as a kind of a challenge to the kind of things that Socrates says in the first half of the, of, of the dialogue, a, a conception of the relation between body and soul that uh, paints a certain picture where the idea of the soul living on is, is, is very unlikely because the idea there is that the soul uh, is dependent for its existence upon the body. That they are two different things, but because the soul is, is, cannot exist without the body, then obviously uh, the soul cannot uh, continue to live. That, is, that comes from Simeon's. Uh, not from Socrates. That's imp very important to clarify that in your mind. Uh, maybe the third point uh, is this whole idea of death being the separation of soul and body. Uh, that is not something that Socrates argues for. That is the major premise of his argument. That is, it's an assumption that he takes for granted that death is Death is defined as the separation of soul and body. Uh, what he has to argue for and what the whole dialogue is meant to be an argument for from Socrates' point of view is that after that separation that the soul continues to have an existence. That, in a certain sense, is the whole point, uh, argumentatively, of the dialogue to establish that. So one of the things you, you need to separate in your mind are these two different theses. One, that, this, that death is the separation of soul and body. And two, that the soul continues to live after that separation, that it continues to exist after that separation. The first is an assumption. That is, that that's what death is. It's, it's the parting of the ways of these two elements of us, the soul and the body. The second thesis is not an assumption, but rather an hypothesis. That is that the soul continues to live after this separation. As an hypothesis, rather than a premise or an assumption, it is the kind of thing that needs to be argued for. And the it's quite clear that Socrates understands this because he's continually arguing for it. He never argues that the soul, or excuse me, that death is the separation of soul and body. That is something that is assumed. So the logical structure of it has to be clear in your mind. That is, we start from, as Socrates' point of view starts with an assumption that death is the separation of soul and body. And then the, the very nature of the argument requires that he give some sort of argument, uh, evidence, that indeed the soul continues to live after that separation. So <clears throat> I want to emphasize that because it's perhaps the most important thing about this dialogue is that you, as a reader, have to decide how good Socrates' arguments are. That is his argument that after this separation, that the soul continues to have an existence. It's, it, it's the, the crux of the thing. You cannot really have a critical knowledge of the dialogue without really weighing those arguments. So the, yeah, there's just a few things. I mean, the work on the discussion board was good. But I found that there are just a few of these points that I, I think, you know, that, that we need to clear up so that we can move on. And if you have any questions, you know, always in this course, uh, if you have any questions about this material, if you feel and I don't see that or then uh, feel free to contact me and I'd, I'd love to have a conversation with you. Just give me a, give me a call on the phone or email me to set up some kind of uh, discussion time.